Is this on? Okay, I'm just gonna pop you up there. There we go. Hi guys, and welcome to Dan Gold TV. I'm Dan Gold, and I've been a tattooist for the last 32 years. And in this episode, I'm gonna teach you how to do a traditional tattoo rose, or how to draw a traditional tattoo rose. The question I get asked the most on here is how do I become a tattoo artist and how do I get an apprenticeship in a tattoo shop? My answer is always the same. It's draw, draw, draw. The more you draw, the bigger your chances are to get in. The stronger your portfolio is, the more impressive it's going to look once you apply for that job. But I realized I've never really covered what to draw and what that portfolio should include. So for me, I think one of the strongest things that that portfolio can include is traditional tattoo designs. Now I hear you going, ah, I don't want to be a traditional tattooist. I do hyper-realism, I do graffiti tattoos, I do tribal, I do neo-traditional. It all stems back to the modern day traditional tattoos and it's so important. And one of the reasons why it's so important as well, it shows that you care about tattoo history. If you go into a shop and you have done your research and you can do these traditional tattoo designs and then show them the kind of tattoos that you would like to do in the future, it's a really strong starting point. And I think most shops would be very impressed with that. So the first place that we could start with would be with one of the most popular tattoo designs over the years. It was certainly the most popular tattoo design when I started in the 80s in a professional tattoo shop and has remained ever since one of the most popular tattoos and it's the traditional rose. The rose we're doing today, or I'm teaching you how to draw today, goes right back to early 1900s. A lot of people think it's a Sailor Jerry rose, but actually it was a guy called Percy Waters who used to sell tattoo machines in the early 1900s and he also used to sell tattoo flash and i think he was one of the first people who did this his designs were really popular and widespread and then what other tattooers would do is they'd take his designs and improve on them or add their own touch to them so the one that we're going to do today is a simple rose and then in the next program we're going to do a more elaborate rose and you'll see that they both kind of cohere to the same rules. There are very strict rules. Actually, they're not strict. There are just some very simple rules uh, that you can apply to any kind of old school design. So this is the kind of tattoo flash that you should really uh, have in your portfolio, in my opinion. And uh, this kind of rose is what we're going to cover today. So without further ado, let's get drawing. First of all, you need some paper. It's important that this is watercolor paper. What kind of brand it is, is less important. I will suggest you use quite a heavy one. So 300 grams is quite a thick paper. And it means that if you put a lot of water on it or a lot of color, it doesn't kind of buckle up or misshape. This one is a cold press. Cold press means that it's got a little bit more texture than hot press. Then you need a pencil. Any pencil will do. <laughs> it doesn't really doesn't matter and a rubber or a razor the next thing you'll need and this is quite important is a permanent marker and make sure that it is permanent you can do a little water test with them first because some of the pens I found even though they say they are permanent they actually kind of smudge a bit once I put the watercolor on top the good old sharpie is always a good one it's not the finest of pens and it tends to bleed out a bit but that's actually good training because it reacts a little bit like a tattoo needle would so if you kind of hover around too long you're going to get a spread on the paper and if you do that with a tattoo needle you're going to get a blowout so the next thing you need is some watercolor brushes again a good quality will make a difference there's really quite a big difference between cheap brushes and quality brushes i use these ones you need one that's slightly bigger than the other so you use the small one for the actual color and ink and you need the bigger one for your water this is the ink we're going to use today this isn't the best ink for it this is just a calligraphy ink again that was all i could get at the moment because we're still at a lockdown i'm going to need some water and then the colors i'm going to use today are i think the absolute best these are called ph martins and 
they are a radiant concentrated watercolor and for the actual rose I'm going to use just this standard watercolor and once we get painting you can see there's quite a big difference between these two even though they're the same brand so they they react quite differently on the paper so the first thing we need to do is draw two circles so the first one is a little bit bigger than a 50p pence and then the second one about twice as big as that one of the most important things about this drawing is the three quarters rule so if you have any surface there, there shading color skin so we take this one and we can go across with a little wave like that down up and like that leaving a little bit exposed on each side like that and then we find the middle which is roughly around here and then we do sort of similar shapes again so it's always good to repeat the shapes one of the things that the eye really loves is repetition it always looks good and our brain loves it and then we do the heart and then we do that like that and inside here we do three little hearts one and then two and three three little hearts and that's your middle of the rows and then that's like here and here it's the outside what we're going to do now is we're going to create five petals that's going to go around here and the reason why we do five is again it always looks better to the eye to have an uneven number so now we've got to figure out where we're going to have our five petals one of them is definitely going to be here at the bottom one two three oh maybe we've got a bit big on that one four and five so as you can see we'll try and get them the same size once we've establish where they're going to go the bottom one could be a little bit bigger it kind of pulls the whole design down and as you can see now we've got a lovely balanced design and then just try and keep the same shape for all of these I normally do a little a little sort of bump in the middle round nice lovely curve bump and then a curve round bump and a little curve there we go now we can see that we got a lovely traditional rose now we've got to add the leaves so you find the middle of your rose and you just go out like that and out like that out like that out like that and again I should do five one there that looks good so once you've got that middle point you can do sort of middle of the leaf here and then you can do this kind of shape which I like or you can do a more traditional tattoo rose shape which is the Christmas tree that one it's totally your choice which one you do this one is kind of more realistic and I just like it because it's a bit sharper I don't really like the too much bubbly gum on, on the traditional designs other people prefer the softer look of that one but we're going to go with the sharper ones here which are teardrops like that and you can see once you've got that center point you're never worried in what direction your 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 leaves are going to go because you've always got that anchor point there leave a gap in the middle where you can put some yellow in to break up the darkness of the green this is particularly important when you do the tattoo in real life if you're doing a really small version of this you might want to 
lose that yellow gap in the middle because it if you're leaving too small a gap it will close up over time how you end your leaves is, is also up to you but you can add like a little red droplet at the end it always looks quite effective and it's quite nice and to balance it up a bit we can add a little bit of filigree maybe three of these we do like that and there we go so that's your basic structure for the traditional rows obviously i've drawn it a little bit bigger here so you can see it more easily now we've got to do our outline so we're going to start with outlining here this middle bit i'm quite happy with this shape so i'm going to keep that and this is what i talked about where the sharpie is quite a difficult permanent marker to work with but it's quite good can you see where i just hesitated a little bit and it just bleeds out and that's exactly the same thing a needle would do in the skin or if you're anything like me you're not going to be 100 percent happy with your drawing and the tendency is to rip it up and start again and this is a big no-no if you're going in to apply for a job we're not looking for perfection what we're looking for is progression well, i think this is a really important point and maybe you're struggling a bit and as the portfolio goes along i can see the progression and you're getting better so it's always good to include some of your early drawings and show your progression so if you're not happy with the first one you do then do more distance that's fine but what you do and you must keep is the same direction you can really tell if one of them is out if you don't feel confident going straight in just draw them on Do your pencil first your outline now we're going to do some shading now take your rubber eraser and then gently rub out the pencil marks you don't want to damage the paper change the structure of the paper when it comes to shading traditional tattoo flash one thing you've got to remember is we're not going for three-dimensional shapes here this is flat this is a little circle that goes around here and that's kind of one third of each pedal that's the bit I want to be shaded. And then the next circle, one third as well. And that's what's going to be red. Now we're going to add the grass green to the leaves and you'll see that these uh, concentrated watercolors are quite translucent when we put them on compared to the other watercolor which isn't, which isn't the concentrated it's quite opaque i like to do it this way where i put a thin layer of green first so i can get right up to the edge and i can kind of control how intense i want the green at the edge it's a little bit the same way as i tattoo again where i start with the lightest color and work my way into the darker which is opposite of what you're normally taught put a nice lovely layer there and just let the water do the blending and uh, you'll get this absolutely phenomenal 
effect like that. That's still the green done now. And now I'm gonna move on to the red. So this is just a straight up normal watercolor. This one is uh, a lot more opaque than the others. You, you can actually see. We use the same technique, water down the colour. And again, take your brush, plenty of water, quick little dip on water, and there we go. can choose to leave the skin color or paper color I guess if you want to you can choose like I do to color them in yellow it's totally up to you I think it looks nice with a bit of bit of yellow but on a small tattoo it look just as good having those bits in skin color as it would yellow just depends on what you're going for and that was the yellow and then just the last bit, the finishing touch, just gonna do these tips in red. And there we have it. Technique that we've used today goes right the way back to 1910, 1920, maybe even earlier. So there's a bit of history. So there you go, guys. That was my version of a traditional simple tattoo rose or at least that was how I was taught and it's quite interesting to think that my master who taught me in the 80s he was taught by his master maybe in the 50s he was probably taught by someone who was tattooing around 1920s and that was when Percy Waters were doing these original designs so I just love that connection to history if you enjoyed it please put a like got any questions just ask me under in the comment box and don't forget to subscribe so we can make more of these videos i love to do them so if you love to watch them please subscribe and please put a like thank you very much thank you for watching